that's what we'll talk about. Okay, we can say that. So here's what we're going to do together for the next day of time. When we're done, and after we really stare this thing off, then I'll wait for your question. If you really don't like me, I just want to keep it going with the next day's drive. How many of you here, <clears throat> if you were to drive from Lansing, Michigan to California, right, and you had that much thread left on your tires, what would you like to know about? Come on now, that's not a trick question. <laughs> You guys are not going to say anything? I mean, usually people are like, right now. If so, yeah, that's right. We're already getting the new tires, right? If somebody was to take money out of your bank account, I'm being out with you on a monthly basis, right? What would you like to know? Right? Andy is just like this. He's like, is that a trick question? The answer is not. Right? I'm going to get to my, my main point here in a second, right? I tell people all the time, I'm like, listen. If something was to lose, what was to, to steal health out of you every single day of your life, what would you like to know? Like, I want you to think about that for a minute. Most people, not only in this country, but you know, I'm from Canada originally, and most of you know that, right? Most people, at some point in time, you're gonna develop some kind of chronic illness fairly quickly. There's only one person out of a thousand that makes it to the age of 60 years old without taking a prescription medication. Right? It's not unusual by the time you get to 60 that you're going to take anywhere between 5 to 8, which is like on the low side. Right? And if, you know, there's probably some of you here that are not, you know, you're nowhere near that and maybe you're never going to be there and that's good. Right? But that's not the average people. So, when I ask people, when would you like to know, right, as it relates to your health, for most people, what they think about it, you know, that's not a trick question. It's like, well, if something is stealing health out of me, when would I like to know? Right? For most people, you'd like to know now. Right? Um, you know, the goal tonight is to be able to just kind of shine the light on the topic of gut health, but not only to shine the light on that, if you've been here before, I kind of like to shine the, the, the light on health in general. Because really, if you don't have your health, you don't have much. Would you agree with that? Right? In the next 30, 45 minutes, what I want to share with you is I want to share with you the most effective, natural, the most powerful way. Right to to improve the you know the health of your gut while minimizing the chronic illnesses right of any source because if you start looking into gut health there's uh, when your gut is not healthy there's like talk about chronic illnesses and guess what it's connected to that it's connected to heart disease it's connected to cancer it's connected to uh, mental illnesses right which uh, is unbeknown to a lot of people because people don't really understand the connection this young lady here her name is Helen. And I'll speak, Helen, just a little bit about if she's got clean hands. If you guys might not have gotten to know her, um, you know, at our church, she does all the sign language for us, the people that come to church. Helen, is that true? Am I not, I'm not saying why, is that the way? Okay. <laughs> and by the time we're all said and done, right, the goal here would be for you to uh, have a next step, whatever next step is for you. How many of you are here at some point in time to write a great book? You intended to do something with the information you had in the book, but you never did. How many of you? Don't lie if you didn't raise your hand, because I'm knowing some of you are like, yeah, I've never done that. Number one, I don't believe it, right? If you're like, I you might have only read half the book. Yeah, I only have half the book. Put it back down there. Okay, so let's start on this, and then, um, you know, see if we can shine the light on, on this thing. I'm going to start from uh, maybe a little bit of a different approach that I've done in the past. If you were here in the past for some of those classes, Right? We're going to start from the top down, and I want to kind of, uh, you know, get you to understand a little bit about what normal is instead of just telling you about all the symptoms that people have and, and what that means. I can only see somebody just looks at where they're looking, right? That's what they need. That's not the way it's going to be. Oh, there you go. So I just want to show you this picture here so you can have a little bit of a and insight when we start talking about all those, how they all connect together, right? Your gut, maybe for some people, uh, when people have issues in their gut, they're like, well, my, my, my belly hurts. You know, and I'm thinking to myself, like, what does that mean? Right? My belly hurts. I mean, it's like, is it above your belly button? Is it below your belly button? Is it on the right side? Is it on the left side? Because ultimately, all those organs are all connected together. And then when people have issues with them, right, it's going to give you symptoms in different places. People will have different symptoms. or if they feel it on their body, it's going to be different places. So if you look here from the top down, 
Right, you start with your esophagus, and you get to know the first area of your gut health is your mouth. It's not on that picture, but this is where, right, where really the digestive system, you know, where it starts. And if you grow up where you heard my story, right, I've got four siblings, and I've got two brothers, and it was always like a rat race to just make sure that, you know, they would not steal my food, so I eat that, just so you know. If you've ever been right next to me, you'd see that, and you'd be like, slow down. Then it is pretty hard because I'm like, hey, you know what? You're not going to sell anything from my family. I'm the oldest boy, and you know, I'm going to win. So the digestive system starts in your mouth. This is where you digest your, you know, your carbohydrates, right? You have some part of your saliva, and you have digestive enzymes there, right? That's going to start breaking sugar right into your mouth. So when people have issues with breaking down their food or they have digestive problems, usually they're just addicted to sugar. Now. I mean, I would say a lot of people are doing that, addicted to sugar, right? But it could be one reason why people have issues with uh, wanting to have a lot of sugar is because if your gut doesn't work properly, when you eat sugar, you, you get energy out of it right, right away. And you'll see that in people as they get older, right? As you get to be like 55, 60, 65, 70, because your digestive system doesn't work properly, the only way that you can get energy out of your food is by eating sugar because you just don't digest it. Right? And I'll tell you why in a minute, because that will make sense. And you'll see people that when they lift their arm up, you start seeing all this fat that is just sagging. Right? And the reason why you see that is because you don't digest your food and you don't, you're, not, uh, you're not assimilating your fat and your proteins properly. Right? Then you, you start seeing this little, like, you know, it's like a reverse bicep. Yeah? You guys have seen that in older folks? You go to the nursing home, you have this reverse bicep. The reason why you have that is because you don't digest food anymore. Right? And then when people get older, you know, if they're not in their nursing home and they don't feed them with sugar, then they stay at their house and then what do they eat? They eat sugar all day because that's, you know, if they want to have something that's going to be quick to eat away. Right? They're like, yeah, I want something quick. So what do they eat? They just eat junk all day. Because that's what they can get energy from, because that's what's quick. Right? This is, you get inside here what is this third, so it's, you know, you have a, a you know, you have a big picture here. And then this uh, goes down to your esophagus. And then it gets into your stomach. From your stomach, it's going to get into the small intestine. And then, in order to uh, to digest the food in your stomach, right, you got to have some enzymes that are being produced. Now, the problem is, by the time you're at the age of 40, which I'm looking at all of you here, maybe about one, you guys have passed that, right? What happened is, you're, 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 there's some cells in your stomach that are supposed to be produced. They're supposed to be producing digestive enzymes like hydrochloric acid. And starting at the age of 40, you're going to have less hydrochloric acid every day, right? Starting at, starting at the age of, the age of 40 years old. If you don't have hydrochloric acid, then you can't break down protein, right? And if you can't break down protein, that's how you build stuff. So if you don't have the building block to build stuff, then, you know, then we're not doing well. Does that make sense? You follow me so far? Right? So it goes into your stomach. When your stomach produces digestive enzyme, we're to break down stuff. And then from your stomach, then goes into your small intestine. Your small intestine is going to be, let's just backtrack here for a minute because this is important. Um, there's a lot of uh, folks out there that are promoting and they're teaching, right? I just want you to have this understanding here because this is important. I'm not going to go too much in depth tonight, but I want you to understand the basics because what I realize is people don't really understand the basics, so it's hard to understand what's more complex, right? Your stomach should be very acidic. So there's this thing out there that people are teaching your whole body should be alkaline, right? You should drink alkaline water, you should put a little lemon in your water and drink that, and you know, find, trying to find out being on an, an alkaline diet. And I just want you to understand that Dr. John is not a fan of that because people don't really understand what that means, right? Every single system in your body has different things, meaning that when you put your, your finger, if you were to put your finger into a, a person, a normal person's stomach, right, it's very acidic. It should go down when you're going to the, the, the process of digesting food. It goes all the way down. The pH goes all the way down to the tube, which is very acidic. Understood? It's very acidic. It's not alkaline, right? So that's the reason why when you take Pyloset or you take those anti-acid, right? You go to the doctor and the doctor says, hey, you have acid reflux. You have GERD. You have indigestion. We're going to give you Pyloset. And what Pyloset does or any of those anti-acids, it makes your stomach more alkaline. So what it does is it takes the symptoms away, but we're just killing you softly. So as you're, not, as you're feeling fine, right, we're just killing you faster. Your stomach was never designed to be alkaline. It was designed to be acidic. Because this is how you break down food. 
And if you don't break down the then what happens is it turns into organic acid and shoots back up, and then it's called acid reflux, so it's called dirt. Right? And then the doctors, they have this magic idea that they'll let you do something like you let them give you those tongues, right? And then you're going to feel better. And people do feel better in terms of their symptoms, but it's not fixing the problem. Do you understand? I've been doing some clinical nutrition now for 20 years. I've maybe one person in 20 years that I found who's truly having issues with acid in their stomach too much of it. One person in 20 years. It's just, just about never happened. What happened is most people, 99.9% .9 of the time, is people don't have enough acid into their stomach, so they're not processing the food properly. And then when you don't process the food properly, here's what's going to happen is you're going to have this process called putrefaction. Meaning, I don't even know if I say this right, but basically you can't break down your protein and then you're going to start farting and it's going to smell bad. Right? I know you guys didn't want to hear that, but I'm just telling you. Okay? We're going to talk about farts tonight. Right? Or if your farts don't smell, that means you have problems with carbohydrate digestion. But if your farts smell, that means you have problems with protein. You're not digesting the protein. Right? You didn't know you signed up for that kind of class tonight, did you? Right? We'll talk about poop, we'll talk about farts. So, in your stomach, your protein were designed to be digested into your stomach. And if it doesn't happen, then we're going to have some big time problems. Right? Because your protein is a building block of, you know, building muscles. And then with protein, with amino acid, what you do is you also make stuff that makes your brain feels good, right? This young lady here, before we started tonight, she asked me, she says, hey, are you gonna talk about this antheral antheric nervous system, right? There's many books out there that says that your brain is your second gut. Maybe you've heard that before, right? And the reason for that is because in your gut, your body is producing this thing called serotonin and dopamine. This is what makes you feel good in your brain, yes? You guys have heard of serotonin and dopamine? Matter of fact, you know, the, the, the doctor, Psychiatrist, right? That's what they prescribe to people when they're depressed. We're going to give you those psychotropic drugs like those um, those uh, serotonin reuptake inhibitors, right? Did you know that your own body does that? But if you don't eat protein, if you don't break down the protein, and you can't make it, if you don't make it, then guess what? It's not going to make you feel good. Because your body is not, you don't have enough protein and you don't have enough amino acids in order to make the cancer, right? So dopamine and serotonin, for instance, they're made out of protein. They're made out of amino acids. So 80% of what makes you feel good right here is made right here. So if this doesn't work, right, then we're going to be going to have big problems. Does that make sense? Right? Do you follow me on this? Right? So your tummy as well, right? Your gut. is 80% of your gut is your immune system. Right? So if your gut doesn't work properly, then you're in big trouble. Right? Are people concerned about their immune system these days? Well, I would say the past three years, you know, maybe a little bit. I mean, I could be wrong, but, you know, people are maybe a little bit more concerned about their immune system. But if your gut doesn't work properly, your immune system's not gonna, it's never going to work right. So let's circle back here and you break down your carbohydrates in your, in your mouth, right? You start the process and then you break down the, the protein into your, into your stomach. And then after that, it goes into your small intestine. And into your small intestine, that's when you're going to be assimilating your fats. And your fats are being assimilated when you have in the presence of bile. And the bile is made into your gallbladder, right? I don't know if we can see a gallbladder here. You see the small intestine because there's, there's no sign that the gallbladder came on that it's going to take the right picture. But the gallbladder is attached to your liver. Your liver produces bile and then it goes and stored into your gallbladder. And every time you bleed, there's a message that is sent into your brain that says, okay, we need to break down this fat in order to assimilate it. Understood? Right? Now, there's some people out there that just, they're so genius, right? They just think that your gallbladder was a spare part from God. So we're just going to cut them out. There's 700,000 people that just loses their gallbladder on a yearly basis. Did you know that? There's 700,000 people that lose their gallbladder on a yearly basis because they make the assumption they're like, listen, your gallbladder is a problem. Right? It's not functioning right. You have stone. We're just going to yank it out. That was a spare part. Right? Just so you know, Dr. Brown is not big on thinking that there's any spare parts in your body. Right? If God put them there, there's probably a reason for it. Then keep it. If they're not working properly, you've got to ask which part. Why? Right? If you don't ask why, you're not going to know. If you go to the doctor, the only thing we try to do is to try to manage your symptoms, right? But we're not trying to find out what's causing the problem. You follow me? Yes or yes? The answer was yes. Right? So the liver produces the bile. There's about 600 different functions to the liver, but you know, the liver produces bile, and it's being stored into your gallbladder. And then every time you eat, there's a message from your brain to your small intestine that's going to be pushing bile into your small intestine in order to break down the fat, assimilate the fat so you can take it in. Right? Did you know that every single cell in your body is 70 trillion cells? Anywhere between 70 to 100 trillion cells are all made out of fat. So is fat important? Right? Some people sometimes they get excited, they're like, this is great, but my gallbladder doesn't work right, so I don't have to assimilate fat because fat is bad. I'm like, wrong 
take it. Right? They're like, oh, that's good. That, you know, my body doesn't take in fat. I'm like, yeah, that's why people are fat, right? 700,000 people have this all better being removed on a yearly basis. Now, your body is really important. Not only it emitted, it will, it will break down the fat to be assimilated, but it's also in charge of removing the toxins out of your body. The bile is also in charge of your pooping session, right? So it's not unusual. Matter of fact, every single time when I have a new person coming in, I'll ask them, I'm like, so how are your, how are your number two? How are your bowel movements? They're like, oh, great, great. I'm like, what does that mean? Right? Some of you heard that story before, you know, but it happens it's about a weekly basis. People will be like, yeah, great. You know, every three weeks, clockwise, Dr. Jarvie. Right? You guys think it's funny, right? However, there's a lot of people like that. Right? They're like, yeah, I poop once a week. Or yeah, I poops every three days. You know, you know that, hey, you should be at least going to bathroom like on a daily basis, if not more than once a week, twice a day, three times a day. Right? But people don't do that. So how can you have, quote unquote, the crap left in there, right, forever? You eat three times a day, but yet the crap just comes out, you know, once a week. How do you think that your body can be healthy? It's just impossible. Does that make sense? Right? So then small intestine. So I want you to think your mouth is the carbs, and then your, your stomach is the protein, and then your small intestine, right? You have the fat that are being absorbed, then you get into the large intestine, and then whatever's left over that your body can, you know, can take or assimilate or absorb, it's gonna be taken there, and then after that it's gonna go out. Right? So by the time you get now, listen to me here, this is important. So you get into your stomach, your stomach should be acidic, and then you get into the small intestine, the small intestine should be affluent. And then by the time you get into your large intestine, you should be very acidic. And if you're not, you're gonna start farting all the time. True story, right? Because what happens if you get you start having fermentation right into your large intestine, and then you fart. When people's belly are just gurgling, it's because they have carbs that are all digested into your large intestine. Yes, true story, Joe. I'm not lying. Okay. So you gotta understand the process of what the body goes through, and when that doesn't work, right, then we're having problems. So last year I taught this class on leaky gut syndrome, right? In which a lot of people have leaky gut, just about everybody has leaky gut. But the reason for that is because Right? And it's pretty much just one word. The word is if you don't eat food for any length of time, right, you will destroy your gut. And the American diet is sad. The same American diet today, this is what it promotes. It promotes to destroy your gut. That's what it does. Right? The gastrointestinal tract, when it starts um, becoming more thin, the lining of the gut becomes really thin, and then what happens? Then you get in trouble. Right, you get in trouble because people take medication, they take anti-acid. What, what is the anti-acid going to do? It's going to make you more prone to have a hip replacement. Because if you look on this Prilosec business, right, if you look on the label, it's going to say, right, that you're going to stop the absorption of minerals like calcium and iron. So that's okay. We've got a hip replacement. We've got you covered because we do that. Right? No iron. It's no problem. You'll be tired all the time, but we've got you covered too. Right? You're going to go see a doctor. We'll give you another pill for that. You see what I'm saying? So you don't have enough calcium, then you develop osteoporosis, but that's no problem when I have kyphoplasty. Do you know what that is? They stuck a needle in your, in your back, right? And then they start putting some cement into your vertebrae, right? Because you're, you're about to fall, you know, you're about to fall apart completely. This is what those drugs do. They were never designed for people to take it long term. That's what people do every day, right? And then when people start developing some autoimmune disease, you've heard of autoimmune disease like, right, colitis, like IBS, like Crohn's, right? Those medications, when you go see the rheumatologist, the person is in charge of like the pooping master, right? The pooping master doctor is in charge of, you know, overseeing you, right? Which medication are they gonna give people? They're gonna give medication that are immunosuppressant, like your bear, right? And when you start taking those medication on the label, you can read that, it says, well, it's gonna make you more probably have cancer, but that's no big deal, you know, I mean, we, got, we, got a, we don't have a cure for that, but we got treatment for that, right? And we can make a lot of money off of that, yes? So which one is worse? To take the medication to have cancer or that you're just uh, having like colitis or, or having other you know condition in your gut that you may be trying to find out what's causing the problem. Does that make any sense? And then what happened is when you start taking medication, because you know we live in a country right now in a world that just about everybody is in pain just about every year of their life. So then what do people do is they take pain medication. And when you take pain medication, those cops and hitters, what they do every time you take them. Right, there's bleeding coming out of your of the lining of your stomach. But that's okay because we've got a drug for that, or we've got a surgery, which is gonna take you know half of your colon. No big deal. Right? We can put a pouch on the outside. I mean it doesn't look that great, but if you put a shirt that is big enough, nobody will know. That's 
that's not your drug to do the psychiatric drug, right? That's crazy, but people do that. And they just don't know that that's where they're, they're headed, right? So every time that we go see the gastroenterologist, you know, the goal is to manage your symptoms and not to take care of the real problem. So first thing is you gotta be able to digest your food so you need to chew it, that's number one. And then number two is your stomach needs to be acidic enough, that's number two. Meaning that you need to produce digestive enzyme or you need to be taking enzymes on a daily basis in order to break down the food that you're putting in. If you don't do that, then you're in trouble. And then after that, you need to be able to assimilate the fat that you're taking in. And if you don't assimilate the fat, then you're going to be in trouble too. Because did you know, right? You have hormones like testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, DHEA, DHT. Those are all hormones. Cortisol, pregnenolone, those are all hormones that are made out of what? That are made out of fat. So if you don't have fat, you can't make them. Right? Did you know that cortisol manages your inflammation in your body? Did you know that when you when you're in pain and you get a, a shot of cortisol, what does that do to you? Right? It makes people feel better, right? Because the inflammation goes down. Did you know that God's already wired your body to do that? Right? Through your adrenal glands, that's what your body does. But if you don't have enough fat, your body doesn't have the substrate in order to make it so your body can do what it was designed to do. You follow me. Right? So those fats are really important. Right? You should be eating all kinds of fat. You should be eating butter. You should be dripping all over your face, right? You should have like things like coconut oil. You should do that every day. And avocado and nuts and seeds and all this good stuff. Right? Because if you don't have enough fat, then your body, guess what? Your body thrives on that. And if you don't have enough fat, then fat tells you, when it's in your belly, it tells your brain that you're full. So when people are like, well, Dr. John, do you know me? I'm always starving. The only thing that's going to take my starving when he's eating a lot of rice. And I just want to laugh at people. I'm just saying. Right? Because when people are telling me what they're trying to tell me what they what they don't know of what's happening is your body is so messed up, right? That now you're thinking that this is rice is taking your, your hunger away. Okay, and I'm gonna tell you right now, rice is not taking your hunger away because you don't need enough fat. Ninety percent of the time the reason why people are hungry is because they don't need enough fat. You're not gonna remember that writing it down. Right? You were like, I'm hungry, I'm like we well, need more fat. Well, Dr. John, yeah, we're going to be fat if I eat more fat. I'm like, listen, don't worry about that. 75% of the country is fat right now. And guess what? They're not eating any fat. Right? Do you understand that? I know that sounds silly. I'm just telling you the truth. Just look at the stats. You'll know that. So if you don't understand the basic, you're never going to be able to understand what's more advanced if you don't understand the basics of how it's happening and how we need to get this thing to work properly. Right? I don't think so. But at the end of it, only in the future. I am drawing the I'll show you how to do Okay, so then we have, so we went from the small intestine where you're going to be absorbing fat, and then you're also going to be removing toxins, and you're going to do that with the bile. The problem is when you remove your gallbladder, then they make the assumption that because your liver is producing bile, right, that you're going to be okay, but now we're going to stop dripping bile into your small intestine all day long. Your body was not designed to do that. Your body was designed to have bile into your small intestine only when you eat. Right? It's not, it's, it's not supposed to be dripping all day long. That's the reason why when people have nauseous, when people get queasy, right? When people are like, uh, I have pain between my shoulder blades, right? This is people that have issues with their gallbladder. Are they going to have pain right here or they need to remove things on the right side, right? This guy said to me, like, I'm not going to read this book. <laughs> Sometimes people have problems with their anatomy. i got to keep things straight, okay? Your gallbladder and liver is on this side, and then your pancreas is on this side, yes? Right? Gall bladder, right here. Liver is covered by your ribcage. You follow me? When people have liver problems, they might have problems. They might have pain right on top of the liver. They might have pain right between the shoulder blades. They might have pain right here. They might have pain in the right shoulder. The wires going to your liver are also going to your shoulders. You follow me? Right? When a person has a heart attack, they have left arm pain, left, left jaw, but what do you think that is? Because the wires are the same. You follow me? The circuit is the same. Yes or yes? You guys need to understand that. You gotta understand, right? There's this thing called recurrent pain. So when people have organ problems, right, they will they could also have musculoskeletal problems, right? They could have pains in other other places. So that's important to understand that your body's trying to talk to you and then you just ignore it. Right? So Dr. Junkie is speaking to you from a place where, right, anything can cause anything. And then we're not gonna do the uh, you know the carpenter's analogy where everything's gonna be a nail, we're just gonna hit the nail. Right? This body works as a whole, everything works together. So maybe some of you here, if you're watching, you know, there's people out there that are like, oh, I'm into exercise, I want to fix everything with exercise. Well, Dr. Johnson doesn't believe that, right? 
Do I, do I believe you should exercise? Yes, you should. Matter of fact, just about every day, right? I believe that for all of you with no exception, right? Do I believe that you should be putting real food in your body? The answer is you better believe it, right? But there's some people that are into nutrition. They're like, if I just eat well, I'm going to be fine live forever. No, you won't. I guarantee you, your body was designed to move, and if you don't move, you're going to die early, you're going to suffer a lot, you're still going to have cancer, even if you eat well, right? If you don't think well, move well, eat well, guess what? You're never going to be as healthy as you can be. So I'm giving you a perspective from a health perspective, not just like, well, one thing's going to fix everything, because it's not true, right? That's important to understand. We're getting back here to the large intestine. So let me, if the large intestine doesn't work properly, then we're going to have, we're going to start farting more. And that's a problem, right? Some of you are like, hmm, I know some people, maybe that's you. And you're like, boy, I got problems. I'm like, yeah, most people do, right? Most people do. So you gotta understand what your body is trying to do and what's supposed to happen in there before it goes out, right? Now, if you go poop and it takes you a whole roll of toilet paper and you don't wipe, then we're, we're having problems, right? It should be like two squares and then you're done. People are like, really? Yeah. But what happened is when your body is not digesting the, the food properly, then some people, they just look at their food coming right out of them. But some people will say, well, this is really sticky. I know you guys don't want to talk about poop guys, but some of you, we should just for a minute. Right? This is really sticky. You know, those are their little pebbles. I just feel like I'm not, like it's not all coming out. Do you guys understand that there's like hundreds of thousands of people with colon cancer? That doesn't just happen when people are like, this person was healthy and then they're diagnosed with colon cancer. That just doesn't happen. Do you understand that? It doesn't happen. People don't go from being healthy to have colon cancer. It does not happen. There's things that have happened way before that that have led the person to be there today, like having heart disease or any kind of cancer. Do you understand that? Right? People don't go from being healthy to have cancer. It does not happen. People don't go from being healthy, right, to have like 57 polyps when they stick this up your bottom. You know, your butt. Do you understand that? They're like, oh yeah, you know, I'm super healthy, and then I went to my colonoscopy, and they found 57 bowels. That is just doesn't happen. Okay, when you have that, that means that there's a problem. So I want you to understand that, you know, health is not just the absence of not having the symptoms. And it starts with your gut. 80% of your immune system is in your belly, and then 80% of your neurotransmitter, what makes you feel good, you know, comes from here. This is what makes you feel good there, because that's kind of important. What do you think about? Right? So I'm going to repeat this here one more time. You first need to be able to break down your carbs. That happen, you know, it starts happening in your mouth, right? And then after that, we're also going to happen in your stomach because your pancreas is going to produce some pancreatic enzymes. They're going to go into your stomach to finish the breakdown of those carbs. And then in your stomach, it should be very acidic, meaning when you stick your finger into a person's stomach, right, it should burn your finger because that's the only way you can break down protein. After the age of 40 years old, if you're about 40 years old, your digestive enzymes are going to go down, 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 and down. That's the reason why, right? My brother-in-law, his mother lived, you know, at his house for the longest time. She was 92 years old. They take her to the hospital, right? Because they think she's got a heart attack. They run all the tests, couldn't find anything wrong with this lady, and then guess what happened? I said, Tony, I said, give your mom some enzymes. Give your mom some mouth enzymes, right, every day. Bring her home. He's 92 years old, right? Started to give her multi at every meal because this woman is staying at home by herself on the farm. From age 92 to age 99, minus one day, right? 364 days, she's about to turn 100. Guess what? She's never had a heart symptoms after that, right? What's the moral of the story? The moral of the story is when people's digest digestive system doesn't work properly, it's going to give you heart symptoms, right? People think that they have a heart attack. Because if you don't digest the food properly, guess what? Is it going to be easier or harder on your cardiovascular system? It's going to be harder because your cardiovascular system has to be pumping blood, right? You need to be the required energy in order to make the digestive system work. Do you follow me? Yes or yes? We haven't even started the lecture yet. I mean, I'm just priming you up. I mean, you guys seem like you're asleep, but that's okay. Okay? So, you got to go through this whole system, and every single system of your body has a different pH. So I want you to understand that this thing about being your whole body being affluent, right? Dr. John is not a fan of that. I don't think it's true. I think when people are, you know, giving lecture about that, they don't really explain what that means. Now, your blood is, is being kept into a very narrow pH. I agree with that, right? But oftentimes, you'll see people when they have bone spurs on their heels, 
or they have bumpers in their shoulders, or they have like, you know what they call arthritis, because of course everybody's got arthritis, right? I mean, all of you, you don't need to raise your hands, but people they love, they're like, I've got arthritis. And I'm like, of course, everybody does, right? That's my arthritis, Dr. Jungi. I'm like, listen, there's people that are bone on bone, they have zero pain, okay? The reason why you have pain is because you don't have your health. You're losing your health and you're inflamed. And when you're inflamed, then this is when you start having constant chronic pain. Okay, this is not because I, I have arthritis, Dr. Jarmi, right? Of course, everybody's got arthritis, well, however they define that, right? But I can introduce you to people that have arthritis, which most people above the age of 40 have. Matter of fact, I see kids that are 20 years old that have arthritis, they didn't have the beginning of it. And why does one person have pain and the other one doesn't? It's because of the inflammation. When you eat cake cookies, candies, ice cream, red rice, and pasta, there's no doubt about it that you're going to have inflammation and you're going to have pain, right? So what you're putting into this machine here will make a difference on how you feel, especially as it relates to pain, right? So I want to get this straight here because that's important, right? This idea to think that everybody is in pain because they all have arthritis and it must be like, you know, this is my gene, everybody had it, so therefore I'm going to have it. That's a lie, okay? And don't believe that because that doesn't come, that comes from the enemy, doesn't come from, that's not how God wants to be, right? So now let's start. See if I can get results to what we hear. I mean, what do you think? Okay, those are the symptoms we discussed a little bit earlier. This one being bloated, constipated, diarrhea, having gas, and cold, right? My stomach hurts, gas, and reflux, right? There's a lot of symptoms. All those symptoms are related to, right? If you start taking them down, the question is like, well, where do you think you have those symptoms, right? Different symptoms will mean different things. So when a person say, you know, they're like, hey, I fart a lot, well, tell me what that means. If a person say, well, I have bad breath, tell me what that means. What does that look like for you, right? If a person has bad breath, what do you think that means? That means that your gastrointestinal tract doesn't work properly. Your microbiome is screwed up. It's not that you have bad breath. Because the people that are like, I brush my teeth seven times a day, I got bad breath. I'm like, yeah. Because what's happening in here, right, it's a reflection of what's going on in here. So all those symptoms here are connected to some area of your gastrointestinal tract, right? If the gastrointestinal tract doesn't work properly, then guess what? Those symptoms are going to show up somehow, somewhere, right? And then they're going to become more prominent. And then what you people do is they're seeking the doctor because, of course, the doctor knows how to fix them, how to fix your symptoms and manage your symptoms by giving you this little, this is called a script, right? I'm going to give you this little magic script. We're going to get your symptoms to go away, and then we're going to call it good. As we're killing you softly, right, while we're creating other symptoms and other problems, you know, now you don't have your, you know, you don't have your, your acid reflux anymore. Right? So here they have this term, right? It's called gut dysbiosis. Just about every person on the planet has uh, when they've lost their health. Leaky gut syndrome, we talked about that specifically last year. IBS stands for brutal bowel syndrome. People that will go from being constipated to having diarrhea, colitis, Crohn's, diverticulitis, colitis, right? There's a lot of IBS that's because of the inflammation. People that are celiac, they have food sensitivity, which is common today, right? A lot of people are not selling that because they have food sensitivity. Understood? We'll talk about that more later. Okay. So here it says, what can, what can you do about it? What are you doing? Are you taking care of the cause? Are you taking care of the effect? Do people have acid reflux because they don't have enough tongues in their belly? Right? I know you think it's funny, but really it's not, right? I tell this to people, they're like, ha ha. I'm like, yeah, but people do that every day. They never question it. Right? They think their feelings, their symptoms go away, they're like, yeah, when I have acid reflux, I think the tongue I feel better. And I'm like, yeah, but I can't get the cause. Right? We want to find out what's causing the problem. Some of you have heard the story before, but I like to repeat it over and over again. I hope you're going to steal it from me. Right? If there's a car accident right here on Price Road and the cops are there, would you say that's the cop's fault? No. Or you would say the cops are there because they're there to help. Is it the cause? That's the effect. Right? People don't get into a car accident, it's not because of the cops, it's because of the cops, they show up because they're trying to help them out, yes? Right. So do people, you know, do you think people have heart disease because they have high cholesterol? But yet most of the world think that, still, right? People don't have heart disease because they have high cholesterol, they have heart disease because they eat cake cookies, candy, ice cream, red rice, and pasta, because they eat like crap, they don't move, they sit on their butt all day. That's why people have heart disease. People are like, well, that's my, that's because of my family, right? I've got bad genes. The only thing that runs in family is silliness, because everybody does the same thing for decades at a time and generation at a time. 
If you do the same thing as what your brothers and sisters have done and what your mom and dad have done, you're going to get the same outcome, the same thing's going to happen. Do you understand that? Right? Just so you know, I'm not mad at you. I mean, it's coming, but not yet. So we're going to find out what's causing the problem. If you were to have like some kind of symptoms, right? And you're not going to tell me what your symptoms are. One of my questions to you before you leave tonight, you need to ask yourself a question, right? What's causing the problem? Why am I having those symptoms? If you don't be, if you don't ask what's causing it and why, right? You're never going to get the, the true answer. Because the only thing you want to do is to just patch it up. Just get the symptoms to go away. Right? A person cannot be taking a leave and aspirin and morphine and ibuprofen, you know, for a lifetime, which people do that. Right? I show studies in my in my prior classes, some of you have seen before, that you know you're gonna start, you know, you're much more likely to get pancreatic cancer and to get breast cancer and to get all those other types of cancer by taking those drugs. Right? And on top of that, then what happens every time you bleed out of your stomach, then you have an ulcer. Well, that's no big deal, that drug for that too. Right? So it's like insane. You can't sleep, we have a pill for that. You sleep too much, you got a pill for that. You're not happy, you got a pill for that. You're too happy, you got a pill for that. You can't poop, got a pill for that. Poop too much, got a pill for that too. You see how this is like it's silly? People do it every day, they never question it. We need to stop. Okay? Cause and effect. So we heard the fry out of digestion, we talked about that already, but I just wanna it's there. If you guys want to have this, I can't anybody that gives their name to uh, your name and your email to uh, this could be like Delaney or this lady here. She did volunteer, so I'm sure Delaney is happy. Her name is Pam, or she's sitting in the back. Right? You can have this PowerPoint that you can just send it to. So the top one here says the putrefaction of protein. So what's going to happen is you're going to have gas, right? It's going to smell. You're going to start farting. You're going to be bloated. And when you have that, the chances are you can't break down protein. Which is very common, right? You can't break down protein. Then what happened is those fat, when they're not digested properly, they're going to turn rancid. So then the people are going to have, uh, they're going to have symptoms like they're being, they're nauseous, right? Or they're going to have a feeling they want to vomit, or they're going to get queasy, or they're going to burp, or they're going to melt, or they're going to have some kind, of, some kind of abdominal pain. You follow me? Is those symptoms common? The answer is yes, they're very common. Just about people, just about every person have that of some sort, right? Early on in their life, and they're just like, no big deal, just take a pill for that. This last one here says fermentation of carbohydrates and then attaches to the lower abdominal, right? You're going to have gas, constipation, alternating with the diarrhea, gurgling feeling in the abdomen, right? So the question is like, hey, when you have symptoms, where's that at? So this here, this here, this here, where's that at? Right? Because it's going to matter to be able to zoom that in. Now, when I test people, it's pretty easy to tell, right? Because their body is just not moving. But if you don't know, right, you get flu, right, you get bloated after you eat. You have acid reflux, you have GERD, right, you poop every day. You have, like, soft stool, you have hard stool, right, all those things will matter because it tells you what's happening in your body, okay. This young lady right here, her name is Helen. And Helen was asking about the enteric, enteric nervous system. So there's many people that believe that in your gut there's another nervous system, right? You have your nervous system, which is your spinal cord. It's in your in your spine, you have your central nervous system. And then outside you have the spinal nerve coming out, 31 pairs. And those nerves they go to every organ tissue cell in your body. That's called your peripheral nervous system, right? So you have the central nervous system, you have the peripheral nervous system, and then Helen, right, she reads too much, and then she's asking me those hard questions. She's like, hey, are you gonna talk about the enteric nervous system? Enteric means gut, right? So people believe that when they, when they write those books, they're like, hey, you know, your gut is like your, your second brain. When people are like, hey, I have this gut feeling, I mean, you're not crazy. I mean, you could be, but uh, there, there's something to that, right? That's your enteric nervous system. So that's really important, okay? Then your gastrointestinal tract, it starts all the way from the top, all the way from the bottom. Those guys right here, oftentimes people are missing on that. You know that when there's more and more people that you probably hear about right now, they have pancreatic cancer. And it's not, it was really rare that you hear about that before. But now it's very common to hear people with pancreatic cancer. And the sad part about pancreatic cancer is if you have it, the chances are within weeks you'll be dead. Right? It doesn't take like, we're not talking about 10 years. It's like within weeks you'll be dead. 
not unusual to buy a kind of person that, you know, they will tell me about another person that had it, or the people that I've known, which I've known two of them in 20 years, within weeks they were dead. Right? So it doesn't take much time. But your pancreas, what it does, it will produce insulin. Right? And you produce insulin when you do what? Yeah, when you eat sugar, when you eat candy cookies, candy cookies, candy cookies, candy cookies, candy cookies, if you eat fruit, then your pancreas is going to be producing insulin because what the insulin does is going to store into sugar, right? And you have some that's going to be stored into your liver, about 400 grams, and then another 100 grams is going to be in your muscle, about 500 grams total is called glycogen. If you store it with your sugar, it's called glycogen. You follow me so far, right? I am not here, but don't tell anybody. This is like lying, okay? So, 500 grams of glycogen, which is your store, your store for sugar. After that, everything turns into fat. You follow me, right? So you can only, you only have 500 grams of sugar that is being stored. After that, it all turns into fat. So when people eat cake cookies, they eat ice bread, rice, and pasta, right? And they do that every day at every meal. Guess what happens, right? They start like accumulating more fat and more fat and more fat and more fat, and they're like, you know, but I don't eat any fat. What happens is when you eat sugar, sugar just turns into fat. That's what it does. Not only it turns into fat, but it's pro-inflammatory. So what that means is, if you were to take gas and put it in the fire, what would happen? Right? This guy is back there. I don't know his name, but he's like, that would make a big fire. Right? Of course you'd have a big fire, because that's what happened. Right? It's like putting gas in the fire. So when you eat sugar, that's what happens. Right? And then you have pain. But of course you probably have pain because you have arthritis, right? Because that's easy to say you have arthritis instead of saying, well, the reason I have pain is because I eat cake with these candies and ice cream. And I eat that in the closet when nobody's watching, right? So I want you to understand how important that is. Now, it's like there's a part about this eating thing that is just like we're all messed up in our head. I mean, starting with me, right? I'm Dr. John Gee and I'm a carboholic, yes? I mean, I love sugar just like you guys. You guys are, I mean, there's probably maybe Wendy doesn't like sugar, but the rest of you probably all like it. Just, you know, pretty much the whole world loves sugar. Right? But I want you to understand that when you start eating sugar, then what happens is your taste buds are going to change, your brain's going to change, all the chemicals in your brain, everything's going to change. Right? So if you don't eat sugar, then no, nothing tastes good. You see what I'm saying? They've made it this way. Those companies, they have biochemists that are just like, their job is to trick us. Right? With MSG and all the chemicals that they put in the food, and when you put it in, then your taste buds completely change. So all you want is you want junk. Right? And if you don't have junk, then you just you're never satisfied. You see what I'm saying? It's an upward battle. But if you want to win the battle, you need to know what you know what you're fighting against first, right? So you can start having ammunition. I'm gonna tell you in the world of food, your first ammunition is to start eating fat. Right? This is the first step into getting your brain to function again. Understood? Right? So that's really important. I don't know where I was going with this, but what I want to tell you is there's a lot of cancer, right? Pancreatic cancer now that you never used to hear about. And then those guys are being taken out like their spare parts, right? People have like this, uh, do you understand that there's more people now with liver cirrhosis and fatty liver than ever before, right? They call it non alcoholic fatty liver, liver cirrhosis, that people, they don't drink, right? So usually when you say cirrhosis, you're thinking to yourself, you're like, yeah, this person must be a drinker, they're drunk, you know, that's why they have cirrhosis. Guess what? Fatty liver and cirrhosis of the liver is very common in just about half the population. And the reason for that is because when you eat cake, cookies, candy, ice cream, bread, rice, and pasta, that's what happens to the liver. The liver gets crummy, right? It's getting gorged, and then what happens is you start having fatty liver, and the step after fatty liver is, is cirrhosis of your liver. Even if you don't drink, Right? That's because of what we eat. And you can you can completely turn that around if you choose to. So that's a big deal. There's about 600 different functions in the liver. The liver is kind of a big guy and it's kind of important, right? And this very, it works uh, very intricately with, you know, the health of the body, the digestion, and the ability of your body to be healthy, the immune system to do what it's designed to. So, the first line of defense, we talk about the immune system, the second brain builds the serotonin, which is made out of, it's made the building block of those neurotransmitters is, is amino acids or protein. If you don't eat enough protein, you can't do that. Right? If you don't eat enough protein, you can't do that. If you don't have enough protein in your body, then you cannot make stuff because this is how you build stuff. Right? 
You should have about half your body weight of protein on a daily basis. So if you're 200 pounds, you should have 100 grams of protein on a daily basis. Right? Half your body weight in grams. You should have about, right? I mean, according to the best physiologists, scientists, there's a book out there, it's called Life Without Bread. If you've never read the book, I mean, you should. It's pretty easy to read, right? It says in that book, there's, there's two German physicians, Lutz, last day, L-U-T-Z, right? And they're like, hey, listen, you need about like 50 to 75 grams of sugar per day. Whether you have your Hershey Kisses or you have carrots, 75 grams. So let's say that I'm giving you a break and you have 100 grams a day. That's 400 calories. And let's pretend you're 200 pounds and you eat 100 grams of protein, which is another 400 calories. The total of that would be 800 calories, yes or no? The answer is yes. Right? So here's 800 calories. Let's say that you're on a 2,000 calorie diet or a 1,600 calorie diet. That means that the other 900 to 1,000 calories should come from fat. Do you follow me? Right? Most people, they don't eat nowhere near fat, enough fat. Matter of fact, you know, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you should go and manage this, this app. There's about like 5,000 of them, right? On this app I call my fitness pal, there's many of them, and you just put your food in there for a couple days, you'll see. Because it's going to give you this pie shape of like, you know, how many carbs you had in a day, and how much fat you had in a day, and how much protein you had in a day. Half your body weight in protein. If you're 200 pounds, it's 100 grams, right? According to the best physiologists about how the body works, about 50 to 75 grams of sugar. That's it. But let's pretend that being generous, you can have 100 grams. So then the remaining should be fat. Every gram of fat is 9 calories. Right? People are like, oh, that's too many calories. I'm going to be fat. No, that's interesting. When people start eating fat, they just start losing weight. Right? Because what happens is if your body doesn't have sugar to burn, it's going to start burning fat. That's pretty cool stuff. Okay, we're almost there. So how does the drug affect the GI tract? It's going to make you bleed, right? When people take a lot of pain medication, it also like makes you stop moving. But that's no big deal. We just have a pooping pill for you, right? Do you see where this thing is going? Right? I mean, there's a pill for every ill. So whatever problems you have, we're going to have a pill for that. So you take your pain drugs, right? Because now the doctor is nice enough to give you a script for that, or you get the over-the-counter one, and then you stop pooping. But that's fine. No big deal, right? There's millions and millions and millions of people who have chronic pain every day. They take those drugs every single day. They never question it. And then the next thing that happens is they have cancer and they're like, well, I don't know what happened. I'm healthy. This person was healthy. Right? I want you to know that there's a reason. When you take an antibiotic, right? When you start when you start reading in the Journal of Nutrition, the Journal of Science, that when they start they start talking about antibiotic usage now and people that, you know, some say that, you know, it will just ruin your gastrointestinal tract for two years. Two years. Two years. Every antibiotic that you take is going to ruin your gastrointestinal tract for two years. Right? Now remember, 80% of your immune system is right here. Right? So do you think that we have good incentive to make sure that this guy here is working properly? Right? That you're digesting the food properly, that you're pooping properly, right? That you're assimilating the fat properly. Do you think that's important? There is not about one person when I test them nutritionally on any program that, I, that anybody that I know here in our nutrition program, there's probably, there's not one of you here that I know of, because I know you, that you're not taking some digestive enzyme. After the age of 40 years old, I guarantee you, you need it. Right? I guarantee you. And the older you get, right? the more that you need to just pay attention to that because what happens is when your body becomes more affluent, right, what happens is you get that, you see that in people in nursing home, you see that in older people, what do you see that they start having UTIs, right? If you've ever been in a nursing home and people are falling apart, UTIs are very common. When you have UTIs, it's really hard to find out what the person has, right? Because they get confused. You're like, well, that's their mind. They're getting old anyway, right? They start like being like disoriented. A UTI will do that to them. And the reason why they have that is because they're so affluent, their body is so affluent and so not functioning properly, they can't digest their food from the top down, right? So their whole body is messed up. So if your body is not, doesn't have the right pH, your body is not going to be able to survive properly and do what it's supposed to do. That's the moral of the story. Okay, drugs are not good for that. So what about the pH of the gut? We discussed that. ACV stands for apple cider vinegar. 
So when some of you here, you're like, maybe some of you know about that, maybe some of you don't, but there's something that you can start doing every day that's going to benefit you if you take some apple cider vinegar. And the reason for that is because the apple cider vinegar is going to acidify your stomach, number one, you can do it with food, right? It's going to help you break down the food, but it's also good for the, the cardiovascular system, right? And if it acidifies your body, then what's going to happen is you're going to have less pain. If you have problems with blood sugar issues, you got at night right before you go to bed. You have apple cider vinegar and water, and you just drink that. It helps with your liver, right? Apple cider vinegar is good for just about anything. You should have some every day. Every day, right? For how long? Until the day you croak over. This is how long, right? If you don't like apple cider vinegar, and there's only one person that I know of, she's in this room, and you can't have no, she's outside the room. I mean, she drinks it like straight. She must have been like an alcoholic in the past or something. But anyway, this the only person that I know of that she can just do this straight. Most people they put it in water, right? And if you don't like it in the water, you can have a little bit of raw honey. You can have some raw honey and you take it in, right? You have that a couple, two, three times a day. And then if you don't like it this way, then Dr. Denise, she likes to make those tea at night, which you know I wasn't a fan of, but now I am because you know she's got this special trick. She gives this apple cinnamon tea. And then she put some two tablespoons of you know, uh, apple cider vinegar, and then she put some couple drops of cinnamon stevia. That's it, right? And then she's like, that's it. So anyway, this thing is like, it's great, right? But I'm like, bring it on, I'll have you if you want. Okay? So apple cider vinegar, great health benefit. When people have, when people have arthritis, Right? If you get up in the morning, you're stiff. Right? The reason why people are stiff in the morning takes them, people that takes them an hour to get moving, right? They're like, I gotta take a hot shower, I gotta go warm for the next 10 miles before I get warmed up. Right? It's because your liver is engorged, it's like it's clogged up. You start taking apple cider vinegar at night right before you go to bed, right? This is gonna help you that when you get up in the morning, you're gonna feel better. I know that sounds kind of silly, but I've seen this with people like over and over again, right? So apple cider vinegar can be used for lots of different things. So those are some of the uses that you can have. Right, apple cider vinegar. Some of you can make it. We tried that. We didn't have very good success. Maybe with this mushroom, just get to this fermentation. I don't know if that was the mushroom. I don't know if that was the mushroom. But it was that. Uh, that's good for the gut. OK, let's move on. So in the past 10 years, we've had a lot of, there's a lot of research. Maybe you've heard of this word called the microbiome. You're really good. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. Microbiome is like all the, the friendly microbes into your gut, right? People were all like, I know not you guys, but a few people were afraid of COVID this last couple of years, right? They're like, oh, there's viruses. You know, there's viruses. You know, bad people. So then we're going to, you know, we're going to walk on the sidewalk with three masks on because people think that they truly believe that this is going to save them from COVID. Right? And I'm not here to just put anybody down, but I just want to tell you that walking outside with three masks on on the sidewalk by yourself is not going to protect you from anything. Right? Those gloves have been around millions of them, right? For thousands of years, and it's not going to protect you from anything. Do you understand that? Right? I mean, matter of fact, this is silly. There's a lot of people that are sick right now, as we speak, that have been sick now for a while because they've been staying in their home for three years, they've been putting their mask on, they've had all their shots. Right? And they're sicker than they've ever been before. You understand that? Right? At some point in time, you need to breathe. And at some point in time, if you're not exposed to the environment, your body doesn't have the ability to do this. You understand that? Right? If you don't go work out, I guarantee you. If you don't go work out, I guarantee you that you're not going to be more fit. If your immune system doesn't work out, you're not going to be more fit. It's not going to be ready to take the environment. Does that make sense? You don't need to have a PhD in immunology to understand that. You got to be exposed to the environment. There's all these little things every day, right? There's the dust, the dander, you know. In the journal of, of allergies now, they're like, listen, if you have kids, you, you, you get them naked. You turn them upside down and you just drag them in the dirtiest corner of the house, right? And then you take their nummy and you drag it on the ground and then you stick it back in their mouth. Do you understand that? That's how you build your immune system, right? This idea to think that you're just going to take some antibacterial stuff everywhere in your body and this is the right thing to do, I'm telling you, it's not. If it's not going to kill you, it's going to make you stronger. You need to be exposed to the environment a little bit at a time every day. 
I'm not telling you that you just you should jeopardize your life. I'm just telling you that you should if you're by yourself on the sidewalk, you don't put three masks on. That's stupid. Okay, that just doesn't make any sense. You need to be exposed to the environment. If you're exposed to the environment, then your immune system is going to get to do that, right? Your gut is full of bacteria and microbes and viruses, and those guys should be living in harmony with each other, right? When people have cold and they have canker sore, do you know what that is? They're like, well, I have a gut of virus. I don't know how to catch that. It was already in your body. You didn't catch it. Do you understand how silly that is? It's already there. The reason why you have a cold sore is because your immune system drops, and when your immune system drops and it's not doing what it's supposed to do, then you're going to have a cold sore, or you're going to have a canker sore. Okay? It happens every time. you got to understand how the body works. Every single day you need to work out. Not just your physical body, but your physical fitness, but your immune system needs to work out. How do you work out? you got to be exposed to the environment. Right? I don't want to get carried away with something that's not good. Okay. So here, the, your gastrointestinal flora, which is all like the, the, the bugs there in your, in your gut, right? There's like somewhere around 20 pounds, maybe more. What happens is when you don't eat what you're supposed to eat, then what's going to happen is you're going to be in constant inflammation. And if you're in constant state of inflammation, it's like you can have a plant, and the plant could be beautiful. The plant has like sunshine. The plant has good soil, the plant has water, but if you take a five gallon of diesel fuel and you just pour it into the plant, the plant's still gonna die. Does that make sense? Right, so this is what happened. At the most simplistic level in your body, the reason why a person is sick is there's only one or two reasons. Are you ready to write this down? You need to write this down. Say so there's only one or two reasons I can be sick. You can be sick because your cells are lacking of something or because they're toxic with something, and if you're lucky, you can have both, right? That's the only two reasons. There is no other reason. There's 70 trillion cells in your body, and there's only two reasons why you could be sick. It's either you're lacking of something, or you're toxic with something. If you're lucky, you'll have both, right? So I want you to understand that. This is applied nutritionally. This is applied mentally. This applies physically. If you're not moving your body enough, you become toxic, because you're not moving enough, right? You have a, a movement toxicity. So inflammation is a big deal. You can take like just about 200 diseases right now and you can funnel them down to one word that's called inflammation. The inflammation is really important, right? So as it relates to food and gut health, that's really important that you don't have inflammation, that you minimize the inflammation in your body. How do you do that? Who can tell me? I don't like it. Stop eating sugar. Thank you very much. Right? So anything that is either sugar or down into sugar will promote more inflammation in your body. So anything that you might be sensitive to, right, this can also happen. Right? If you have food sensitivity, which is common today, the top five is, right? We have gluten, which is grain, right? Number one is gluten, number two is dairy, number three is corn, number three, number four is soy, number five is, is eggs, and then after that is beef, it's, it's tomato, and then after that is chocolate, right? Those are common. Sesame, those are the common ones, right? So when you put the food into your body, now listen to me, this is important, because some of you have been to the allergists, right? When people have allergy, that means that the immune system is not doing what it's supposed to do. Does that make sense? And the gut has a lot to do with that. If your gut is not healthy, you're going to have a lot of allergy because your body is reacting to everything. So the problem today is when you go see the allergist and they, they do this little pinprick test, right? You've seen those pinpricks. They just give you a little pinprick, and if it turns red, then you're allergic to that. Yes? This is called an IgE test. IgE test. You don't need to remember that, but I'm just telling you to have a test and more test for the most part. Right? But people have them. So you go see the allergies, that's what you do. Most of what people's allergies are is it's called an IgG, which is called, it stands for immunoglobulin G, and those are delayed sensitivity, meaning you eat a piece of cake today, you're like, I'm fine. But then on Wednesday morning, you'll have a headache. Right? That's what an IgG test will tell you. It tells you about delayed reaction. And most of people's problem as it relates to food has to do with delayed reaction, right? So if you eat a piece of cake today, you're like, yeah, I'm fine. As a matter of fact, feels good. I think I got some energy. And then what happens is Wednesday morning, you wake up and you have a headache. It's because of a piece of cake you had two days ago. Those are delayed reaction, IgG, right? So you can order a test with IgG. It's called the ELISA test. So when we test people nutritionally, that's what we, that's what we look at. And that's what most people have. That's why when I have people write it down, sometimes people don't want to do it. Because they're like, oh no, because you know, I mean, I had some bad things. I think I don't want to write it down. And they're like, well, yes, you should. Okay.
Okay, so you're not writing it down for us to have like a, a party, like you know, you're doing all those bad things. But you're doing it because you can start learning about yourself. When you start writing things down, you can go back days, one day or two days, and you start looking at the stuff and you're like, no, I did not know that. Understood? Food sensitivity or common. And then after that, you have this thing called bugs. Right? Bugs today, bugs like bacteria or viruses or fungus or mold or parasites, those are very common. Right? And those bugs, what happened is we all, you have bugs into your body. Everybody has bugs in their body, all of you, including me. And what happens is when things get out of balance, right, it's causing problems. So today there's a lot of problems in people's body because the immune system at some point in time, here's how the immune system works. Are you ready? This is how the immune system works. Are you ready? So let's say that here, oh, here's not to pick on the person that's wearing three masks on the sidewalk, but let's pretend I picked that person tonight. Are you ready? So they're on the sidewalk with their three masks on. What the immune system is going to do is the immune system is going to be like, hey, there's a problem here, we're going to wall this up and we're going to send you in the corner and we're not going to, not going to take care of you. And then the immune system is going to see another problem and then what the immune system is going to do is going to say, we're going to wall up the problem and going to put you on the side saying, you know what, I don't have the energy to go after you because I don't have the energy to do that. Hey, you over there, you're bad, but I don't have time to go after you right now because I don't have the energy to do that. I'm going to wall you up and put you aside. Right? So what happened is, this is what happened with the immune system is the person, right, the body has to be building, the body is amazing, by the way, please. Right? The body's going to adapt for a while, and then after a while, when the body is like overwhelmed, right, and the bucket is full, right, then what happens is when there's things that are coming your way that are aggressive enough, the body, the immune system is not going to be able to wall it up and put it aside, right? And that's the reason why when people say, hey, Doctor, you're going to give it the past 10 years, you know, I haven't been sick. And I'm like, yeah, good for you, but that might not be good for you, really. Right? Not being sick, right? Not being like having symptoms might not be a good thing. I know some of you, you'd like to just be like not having any problems for the rest of your life, but this is not how the body works. Right? Having some sniffle and having, you know, having a fever and get your fever to go up and having body ache and all that, that means your immune system is doing what it's designed to do. And you should be embracing that as long as it's not killing you. You understand that? And if you let your body do that over and over again, what you're doing is you're building this. Right, let's pretend you guys don't want to take antibiotics because you've been here now and you're like, Doctor, you're not doing this anymore. Right, let's say that you don't do that. For all those people at the hospital, they all take their drugs and their antibiotics. You follow me? Right? They all take their drugs and their antibiotics. Now, what happens is those bugs, they're smart like you. Right, and those bugs, they're going to start adapting to the environment. They're going to start becoming stronger because they don't want anybody to kill them. You understand that? So now we're creating super bugs. And let's pretend that you guys, okay, starting tonight, you don't want to take drugs anymore. You don't want. You, you just want to do it the, the natural way, right? Well, guess what? Those superbugs are going to be assaulting you too, and you need to be ready for that. How are you going to be ready for that? Is by letting your immune system handle that. But if you don't allow to do that, if your gut is not healthy, your body is not going to be able to do that, right? That's the reason why you're going to continue to build, even if you don't take drugs. My right? doctor tells you don't take drugs, right? I'm not a big fan of it. But I continuously work on the immune system and on the, on the gastrointestinal tract because, right, those bugs are still out there. They're stronger ones every day. You think that the COVID-19 was like a big deal? There's more coming, right? It's going to happen this fall. It's going to happen in December. It's going to happen in January. My question to you is, are you ready for it, right? Some of you are like, no, I'm not, right? Maybe I'm going to die. Maybe I don't feel like I can make it through. And I'm like, listen. All of you here can make it through, right? If you choose to, because your body has the ability to do that. You just got to let the body work its thing, right? Your, your immune system needs to work. And then when the body's been walling off a lot of stuff over the years, here's what happened when we start working with people nutritionally. Here's what happened, right? Within the first month, the person gets sick. They're like, I can't believe it. Dr. John, yeah, I've been sick in 10 years, and now start on those supplements, I'm supposed to be healthier, and now I have all those symptoms. And I'm like, yeah, that's good. They're like, that's what I thought, you're crazy. And I'm like, yeah, I am a little bit, okay? And I want you to understand what the body's trying to do. Are you ready? When you give the body the energy, right, when, you, when the body becomes healthier and it's functioning better, then the immune system is like, hey, you over there, I'm coming after you right now. And as a result of that, guess what's gonna happen? You're going to have symptoms, right? Because your body is healing itself. The immune system is going to start working. You say, hey, you over there, you've been there for 10 years. I'm coming after you because you're next. 
Because now I have the energy to do it. And ultimately, people die because of what? They die because of infection. Right? So it's a continuous battle against those bugs to keep the balance in the body. Right? So your immune system is really, really important. We're going to do a class in November. Right? Or our next dinner with the doctor. We have one at the end of the month. But in November, the first week, we're going to do a dinner with the doctor. It's called Bulletproof the Immune System in the Winter. Right? And I'll be talking about that. Well, okay, well, I'll go there, and then I'll answer some questions. So here's the solution, right? Now that I've found it, this thing is heavy, right? It says stay away from processed food. Most of you, hopefully that makes sense. Stay away from that, right? It's not just like having better food. It's like if you put drugs into your body, it's like putting gas, you know, like five gallons of gas into the plant. Right? The plant is still going to die. Number three, it says you gotta manage your stress. You wanna know why? I was talking about stress the other day. I didn't touch on that, but I wanna touch on it quickly. Right? The only person that don't have stress here is Greg right here. And the guy is like 95 years old. He looks like he's 52. Okay? I mean, he's like, when I grow up, I wanna be like him. He says no. I'm like, yes, I do. Okay? You guys need to go talk to this guy. But, okay, the rest of us, let's pretend we have some stress. Are you ready? So let's say you've heard this story before. Let's say that there's a, a, a let's say that there's a lion coming out of the cage, start chasing you. Right? The first thing that's going to happen is when you start running fast for your life, your gastrointestinal tract is going to shut down. Do you understand that? Right? So when people are stressed out, guess what happens? This shuts down. If somebody scares you, you're going to crap your pants. But if somebody runs after you, right, what's going to happen is this is going to shut down, meaning you're not going to pull or pee. you got to run for your life. Does that make sense? So when people have a lot of stress, can you see how this can be affected? Right? When people have a lot of stress, they're much more likely to go to the doctor and say, well, I have GERD. I have acid reflux, right? I have indigestion. Why do you think they say that? Because they can't digest their food. And then the doctor says, well, no problem. I got a solution for you. I got a pill for that, right? So this year, this is really important. When a person's going to manage their stress, right? I tell people, do you have any, do you have any me time? They're like, what's that? Me time. You know what that means? Me time. Do you have time just for yourself? Right? Most people don't. I'm like, well, if you don't, know, you need to get up earlier. Why get up at five? Well, maybe you can get up at four. Right? You need to have some me time. And then here it says you gotta have proper nervous system function. This guy just last week, I can't. 23 years of this is still, it's amazing. Here's what he says to me. He's like, listen, when I came in, it's because I had back pain, okay? Back pain. But I never told you, right, that I also, like, I would just go poop once every two weeks. He's like, I don't know what you did to me, but you just cleaned me out. I'm like, I didn't touch you. I mean, I only adjusted your spine. Right? I'm a chiropractor. I'm just like, my expertise is in the spine, right? But the spine has a narrow focus, but it has a broad body implication. Do you understand that? Right? Meaning that you can adjust somebody if they have like a, a spinal subluxation, a misalignment of their spine, and their lower spine right here, in this area up here, right? Those wires that are coming out here, they go to the muscles, but they also go to the large intestine and the small intestine. So when a person gets a chiropractic adjustment and then they start pooping, you know, that's pretty amazing, isn't it? Right? But the reason why this is amazing is because those wires, they don't just go to the muscle, it also goes to the, to the organ. So if your nervous system doesn't work properly, guess what? Your gut is not going to work properly. I guarantee you that. 100%. Right? So you should be thinking of that when people are like, well, you know, my back doesn't hurt. I'm like, who cares? You don't get your spine and nervous system checked because your back hurts. Maybe somebody else told you that 20 years ago, but not right now. Right? If you want to be healthy, you got to make sure your spine is moving properly. Because if you're not moving properly, you're dying. Move your body. Whatever that looks like for you. Go to walk. Right? As it relates to your gut, I just want to put this in four simple steps. Right? As it relates to the food that you have to first, you got to remove the things that don't belong. Right? you got to replace them with food that's going to heal your gastrointestinal tract. What is that? Because some of you are going to be like, well, yeah, we didn't talk about that. Yeah, of course I did. Right? You just missed it. You gotta eat more food. What does that look like? If there's a label on it, it's not food. Right? So when you leave, you're like, what am I gonna eat? Well, if there's a label on it, it's not food. But Dr. John Key, I'm gonna stop eating. Well, you could fast, that would be good too. Right? And then if there is a label on it, you know, the more ingredient there is in it, that means it's not food. Right? So what should people be eating? People should be eating protein, they should be eating fat, they should be eating 
fruits and vegetables, they should be drinking water. People are like, well, yeah, water doesn't taste good. I'm like, well, I didn't know it tasted bad, right? So you should be eating more food. And then it says, repair the gut with specific supplements to heal the lining of the gut. I'm going to give you one. There's many of them, but this one is a lot of people know about. If you want to heal the gut back in the day of our parents and grandparents, you know what they did is when they cooked, you know, when they have like, uh, when you eat a steak or when you have chicken, you know, they just cook the whole chicken, right? And after the mom served everybody, then she put everything in a big pot there and just cook that for like the next 15 days or whatever. I'm just joking. You know, you would just boil that thing and then the following day they just strain it. And all this juice that come out of it, this is what bone broth is. This is what collagen is, right? And collagen, there's different types of collagen. There's some coming from the, from the cow. And there's some coming from, you know, from the pig. And there's some coming in from the chicken. So they all have different purpose. So they have this big thing. They're like, oh, you know, collagen and bone broth. This is all this new thing. You know, this new life. This is the, the next best thing. Well, guess what? It's always been there, right? The problem is people don't cook anymore. They don't make soup with that stuff anymore, right? So now they have it in powder in other forms. So that could be, you know, part of repairing the gastrointestinal tract. So there's lots of different ways to do that. You can do that with whole foods, you can do that with herbals, you can do that with Chinese, you know, uh, type supplements. You can do that with homeopathic as well. And then number four says rebalance your microbiome or probiotic beneficial bacteria. Now I'm going to get to my story about this. You know, in our house, we're trying to make it. My wife is trying to make it. Uh, sure, I don't have time for that, but you try it. And then I get into the pantry, and I was just like, it was like, I don't know what happened. You know, something was fermenting there for like probably oh, six months. And uh, I'm not sure what happened. But anyway, I don't make kombucha, I still don't buy it. But if you make your own kombucha, this is a good way. Anything that is fermented, like sauerkraut or kimchi, that kind of stuff, right? Uh, vegetables that you can do some, you can ferment those. Does this improve your gastrointestinal tract? Those are good probiotics. So you have colon prebiotics, yes? Understood? Okay. What's the next one? Oh yeah, I got a list of them. Fermented vegetables, coconut products, sprouted seeds. So when people have seeds or if they have, if you have nuts, right, I want to tell you that, you know, the, the things that we have now in this town more than, you know, before, I don't know about other towns, but we're not as lucky as Back 20 years ago, we didn't have any healthy store, but we have those here now. Right? You can buy nuts just about any one of those healthy stores, regular stuff, regular stores that are sprouted. Right? The process of sprouting the nuts and seeds, right? It's better because it's like you're you're getting them soaked first, right? And you can remove the toxins off of them and get the health benefits. So you can buy your nuts and seeds that are sprouted, that would be like a plus. Can you do that on your own? Yeah, you can do that on your own. So some of you are maybe don't want to do it. Okay, so last but not least, it says digestive health. When people are not are on a sad diet, which is a standard American diet, that can create the nutritional deficiencies, and the nutritional deficiencies create those hormone system breaking down. Does that make sense? Yes or yes? Are you guys a little bit more clear about how the digestive system works? I am not mad, but you know, I mean, I'm just a little excited about this thing called you being healthy, right? Unfortunately, Right? I tell people all the time, I'm like, this is a journey. None of one, there's none of you here, right? Wherever you're at on the journey, there's only like one more step, right? One more step. What is the one more step for you? I don't know, right? If you're looking for one more step as it relates to some of the things that we do here at Gilead and other, other office, I'm like, hey, you know what? When it comes down to your health, you can do whatever you want because that's your health. But just imagine whatever problems that you have right now as it relates to the gastrointestinal tract, the problem that you have, Right? And you don't do anything about it, what do you think is going to happen? Right? Thank you very much. There's no such thing as people are like, hey, I'm just going to be still. I'm just going to stay here for a little bit. Okay? If you're not getting better, you're getting worse. I promise you 100% of the time. Right? So we have this thing called our wellness breakthrough nutritional evaluation. And what we do is, right, what we do is there's four main things that is being done. I'll explain that to you if you've never experienced it. Right? Some of you are already doing it. You can just, like, not pay attention. But I just want to explain it to you, right? There's four main things that happen. Number one is we have you fill out this long questionnaire. The reason why we do that is because people before having a disease, before a person has cancer or heart disease, there's a lot of other things that's going to break down first. 
and they might sound like they're not a big deal, like people have hard time falling. That might not sound like a big deal, but you know that's the beginning of a disease process. People having se seasonal allergies, that might not sound like a big deal, but that's the, the, the beginning of a disease process. A person having indigestion, that might not sound like a big deal, but it's the beginning of a disease process. A person farting all day long and they've done it for 10 years, that might not sound like a big deal, but it's the beginning of a disease process. So understand that, right? So when we ask those questions, there's like a questionnaire that we do that is, there, there is grouping for all those questions, and some of them relate to the gastrointestinal tract, some of them relate to sugar metabolism, some of them relate to the endocrine system, which is their own, their own moral system. So there's great value to that to know that before you get to the disease, there's a disease process and we can pick that up before. Then we do this thing called that heart rate variability and you go to Dr. Google and you type that in. Some of you might not want to do that, but let's just pretend that you do. And you put down heart rate variability, there's like, a, you're going to get a thousand hits on heart rate variability and what it does is it tells us how the organism works when we ingest it. So that's number two. That's why we do that. We want to find out how the organism functions. We don't want to know if a person has heart disease because when people do have heart disease and cancer, they already come in and they tell me. They're like, I have cancer, the doctor said that I can have cancer. You understand that? Right? We're looking for disease process. Now there is people that come in with cancer and heart disease and they already know that. And we take care of those folks. But I would rather take care of people that have a disease process and we can turn around or a person that don't have any problem yet, right? And we can prevent them from having problems. Yes or yes? Yeah. The answer was yes. Right? Number three is we do this thing called the body composition analysis. The reason why we do that is because as it relates to your gut health, right, when you start looking at the body compartment, especially where the fat is, right, you should have fat around your organ, but when there's a lot of fat around your organ, right, the problem is that means you are in a pro-inflammatory state. So we look at that. It's called the body composition analysis. Why do we do that? Because when we see a lot of fat around your organ, that means that it's not a good sign. You're much more prone to have a stroke or to have, you know, to have a heart attack. Right? And your gut has a lot to do with that stuff. So we do that. And then the last thing that we do is we do this thing called a nutritional assessment. Right? And what we do is we use muscle testing and then we, we use acupuncture point in the, on the body to find out, right, if there's any areas that are not functioning properly. And at the most simplistic level, right, your cells in your body can have only, you can only one or two things that can happen. You can be what? I can tell you guys we're listening. You can be what? She's like, I don't know. Your cells can either be lacking of something or you could be toxic with something. There's only two things that can happen, right? In any disease process, there's only two things that can happen. Your cells can be lacking of something or they could be toxic with something, or if you're lucky, you could have both, right? So when we do the nutritional analysis, we can find out if a person has nutritional deficiencies or, right, if a person has also toxicity. For instance, we look for food sensitivity, right? We have problems with wheat, we have problems with corn, we have problems with men with, with their. Do you have problems with bugs in your body like virus, bacteria, or parasites? Do you have problems with heavy metals like chlorine? Or do you have problems with, with BPA, those are plasticizers, right? So we can check for that. We also check for heavy metals, things like mercury, things like aluminum, things like, you know, cadmium or gold or arsenic. Is your wife trying to kill you with arsenic? I mean, that could happen, right? I'm just teasing, right? So did you know that there's a lot of arsenic, you know, in, in rice? Most people don't know that, right? There's some people that don't do well with it. So we can pick that up when we do nutritional testing, right? So if you've never been, if you if you've never had, right, this evaluation, if you want, once we do this and on the first visit, then on the second visit, we'll report to the person, and then we can, you know, tell the person, you know, what's causing your problem, right? How's it affecting your health? What does it relate to your nutrition? What's the requirement you get in our office? And then last but not least, we can help you without paying for anything. Understood, right? Usually when people come in on our, on our first visit, we charge up $200, right? And it's really like a spit in a bucket. I'm going to tell you that right now. You might not know this, but if any one of you here has ever been to a functional doctor, right? Anybody who's been to a functional doctor here, there's about five wellness doctors now. If you go to their first visit, it's like somewhere between $1,500 to $2,000, right? And I guarantee you that I go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any one of them to help a person, no doubt about it, any time of the day, right? So when a person comes in, um, you know, when we do those classes like we're doing right now, right, I tell people, I'm like, listen, if you're ready to just take the next step and you've never done your evaluation, that's something you want to do, right, we charge $75 and this will take you all the way to the report of funds. And then you can decide if you really want a reason or not. Right? Does that make sense? Any questions about that? No question. So you guys are all expert in gut health now, yes? She says no. Okay, so now 
Um, I'm going to go home soon. It's 8 o'clock. I've been here for an hour and a half. That's kind of, I'm always planning on being here for 45 minutes, and that just really doesn't happen. Right? But um, what I would like to do now is take a few minutes to answer your question, and then I'll go home. If you have any questions, if you know everything, then we're all going to go. Who's going to be first? We're going to start with John, and then we'll go to the son. 